Welcome to the intake office of Rowan House Emergency Shelter. The intake office is the heart of the shelter, where most of the shelter's activity flows to and from. I am the clock on the wall in the intake office. I am the reminder of the countless meetings and schedules we keep. It's 7.30 a.m. and the morning shift is arriving to relieve the midnight counselor. I watch as Carly finishes entering her case notes into the tracker on the computer. Her tired eyes glimpse up at me as she thinks about the last few things she needs to do before heading home for bed. The two counselors now sit across from each other in a shift change meeting to catch up on each of the residents staying in the house. Carly says resident G was up a lot last night. She was having flashbacks and was afraid to be alone in her room. But she also shares the aha moment she had when she was able to identify moments of strength and resistance within that experience. They talk about resident C and the appointment she has booked for today. She is due in court in Calgary at 11 a.m. and her request for transportation was approved by the shelter team lead. Resident A will tag along as she has a meeting with Discovery House where she hopes to get into second stage housing. I am the clock on the wall in the intake office. It's now 8.15 a.m. and I can hear residents begin stirring in the rooms above me. More staff have arrived at the shelter and I see them pop their head in the door to say good morning before heading to their own offices. One resident comes to the intake window and requests the key to her medicine locker. She asks when the playroom will open as her children are already eager to get down there. Sydney looks up at me and says, in about a half hour. The crisis phone rings and another counselor on shift answers. Rowan House, this is Lisa speaking. How can I help you? It's the Calgary Women's Emergency Shelter looking to trade information on available beds so they can know where to refer individuals first. We have one family space currently available, Lisa explains. I am the clock on the wall in the intake office. It's now 9.25 a.m. I can hear everyone in the kitchen just around the corner as the residents pour themselves coffee and sit down for morning meeting. I hear laughter and feel a sense of community as they share their gratitude for the day and encourage each other to attend the Healthy Relationship Education Group later. At 10 a.m. I watch as Lisa and two residents leave to make their trip to the city. Another crisis call comes in and Sydney takes a moment to breathe before answering. Rowan House, this is Sydney speaking. How can I help you? I hear her go through a sheet of questions as she listens to someone's story. TikTok ahead to 1125. Another resident comes to the intake window. She is ready to get her finances in order and asks for help getting an Alberta Works form. Sydney pulls one out of the filing cabinet and goes over the details with her. Do you need any more help with this? The resident shakes her head no. Meanwhile, a young boy rushes up to the window and shouts, Boo! Hey, buddy! Sydney laughs. It's not unusual for the children in the shelter to pop by the window to shut up their favorite counselors as well. It's 12.05 and Sydney thinks about stopping for lunch. She hands off the crisis phone to her team lead so she can heat up her food. I am the clock on the wall in the intake office, where most of the shelter's activity flows to and from. The crisis line is ringing again. Rowan House, this is Brittany speaking. How can I help you? At 12.30, Sydney returns from lunch and Brittany tells her they're expecting a woman with three children to arrive this afternoon at 2. It looks like that family space is taken and the shelter is full once again. Sydney goes to the donation garage to put together a welcome basket. I see her hurry past the intake window as she takes it up to the new family's room and makes sure everything is ready for their arrival. At 1.30, one of the residents comes to the window to tell Sydney the good news. She's found an apartment in High River, but she'll need to request an extension at the shelter as her move-in date is set for one whole week after her last day at Rowan House was supposed to be. Sydney hands her a form and lets her know they should be able to make it work. Shortly before two, the doorbell rings. I watch as Sydney answers the intercom and looks at the security cameras. It's the family from the earlier phone call. They've arrived at their new home for the next 30 days. Sydney takes a moment to ground herself. <sighs> Two deep breaths before opening the doors to greet the woman and her children. Can I help you with your bag? I can hear her ask and see the reassuring smile on her face. After Sydney buzzes them into the residential part of the shelter, I watch as they pass the intake window. They look unsure and relieved all at the same time. They pass out of view, but I can hear Sydney ask the woman if she'd like a cup of tea to help her get settled. At 3 p.m., Sydney closes the intake window and the shelter counselors all head downstairs for the next shift change. Shortly thereafter, the doorbell rings again and the shelter facility assistant Char answers. It's the volunteer cooks coming to prepare tonight's dinner. I can hear them pass by the intake window and off to the kitchen. I'm the clock on the wall in the intake office. I'm the reminder of the countless meetings and schedules we keep. It's now 3.45 and I watch as Resident C and Resident A return to the shelter with Lisa. They all look tired after their long day in the city. Lisa still has four hours of a 12-hour shift to go. At 4.15 p.m., another resident comes to the intake window. She confirms with Justine that they're still meeting at six. 
You bet, I hear Justine say. We'll go over the danger assessment calendar and do some safety planning. The smell of dinner is now wafting into the intake office, and I can hear the chatter of residents as everyone gets ready to eat. The crisis line rings. Roman House, this is Lisa speaking. How can I help you? I can hear Lisa tell the person on the phone that the shelter is currently full. She asks the caller if she's in a safe place right now. It sounds like the caller just wanted to talk and is unsure if she wants to leave her partner. Lisa offers to connect her to an outreach counselor to support her in the meantime as she works to make decisions. I watch as Lisa fills out a referral slip and puts it in the outreach counselor's mail slot. At 5.30, I can hear the sound of dishes being done and residents dispersing. One woman comes to the intake window and says she has an apartment viewing at a place here in town. She signs herself out and I can see Justine buzz her out of the building while Lisa watches from the security cameras as she gets into her vehicle. Then Lisa gets back to entering case notes from her time with residency at court. At 6 p.m., Justine heads to the counseling room for her meeting while Lisa checks on the other residents in the common area, the crisis phone attached to her hip. TikTok ahead to 8 p.m. and Carly returns for another midnight shift. As Lisa packs up to head home, Justine does shift change and fills Carly in on the new family and shelter. They don't know much about her yet as she just arrived at two and hasn't come out of her room for much more than dinner. But they do know from her crisis call that her husband was physically abusive and after several incidents where police had been called, children and family services told her she must leave or risk losing her children. They'll do a full intake tomorrow after she finds her feet. I am the clock on the wall in the intake office, the heart of the shelter, where most of the shelter's activity flows to and from. It's now 11 p.m. and Justine is packing up for the night. Carly watches the security cameras as Justine walks to her car and then she checks to make sure the perimeter alarm is set. It's quiet in the shelter now, but it's hard to say if it'll stay that way. If the residents have a restful night, Carly will make her way through the midnight checklist, cleaning that needs to be done, more case notes that need to get entered, and I will keep her company as I tick tock away the clock on the wall in the intake office.